Hey Grace family and welcome back to our midweek check-in. So I'm going to do something a little bit different this week. I want to start off with a story. So at our house right now, we've got a few things under construction. We're moving some stuff around, painting, those kind of things. And so in the middle of that process, I'm taking things off the wall. So I'm taking the TV off the wall. I'm unscrewing it from the TV mount, and I'm taking the TV mount off the wall. Put all of it on the floor. Put all the screws in a Ziploc bag and put it there so I know it's all in one place when I get ready to put it back. Go downstairs and do the same thing with the TV downstairs, take that off, take the wall mount off, and when I pull the screws out, you know, from connecting a TV to a wall mount, I mean, those screws that went in the back of the TV were probably about three inches long. I'm just pulling those out, putting them in a Ziploc bag, getting them all ready to go. So we do a little bit of project, we do some paint, uh, and it gets ready to hang that TV back up. So you fast forward, I don't know what it's been, a week or two, and I get ready to grab the wall mount and the TV, I get the wall mount up, and I grab the TV, and I'm looking for those screws to screw it into the wall mount, and I get the baggie out that I put all the screws in, and I look at that baggie, and those screws are nowhere to be seen. And I'm going, what in the world? So I look at the bag, there's nothing in there, and I start looking all around the room, I'm like, where did I put this baggie? I know I put the screws in a baggie, so I knew where they would be when it came time to hang it back up can't find them for anything. So I'm going through some of my tool sections in the basement, looking in boxes, like anywhere I could have taken this bag and put it. I can't find the screws anywhere, over and over and over. I cannot find them. I keep looking back at that original baggie, looking at it, and there's those thick screws in there that go into the wall, but there aren't the long screws that go into the TV. So it got to this point where I was like, I'm just gonna have to order new screws. So I'm doing some research on it. I'm typing in our TV model now and the mounting screws. And as I'm going through that research process, I keep finding these screws and they're, they're showing real small. I'm like, this is not gonna fit into the TV. And then I had a, a moment where I realized what was happening is the screws that I were looking for were not the really long ones. I had two different TVs and one TV had long mounting screws and another one had really short ones. But I was looking for the really long one. And so I had a moment, I was like, wait a second. Maybe they really are in the baggie that I thought they were in, but I just didn't see them. So I went back and I got that baggie out and I looked at it and sure enough, there's four screws and there's four washers and they were right where I put them. So let me, uh, let me talk a little bit of last Sunday and then I'll kind of connect that story a little bit. So last Sunday we talked about the, the genre of wisdom and we looked at Psalm chapter 19 and we talked about the idea of wisdom being a truly happy life, a truly successful life, and a happy successful life is a godly life. Living within God's word, God's will, and God's way, that is wisdom and that's what it looks like. So a couple of our application points coming out of last week is as Psalm 19 lays out for us is that we need to desire God's word more than money and we need to find it sweeter as the scriptures say sweeter than honey and so you've got money and food that we need to make sure God's word is above and we're desiring it more and we're finding it sweeter than even the sweetest things on this earth and when you think about that a little bit you know God has gifted us his word and as we talked about it's his testimony it's God's testimony to us about who he is and so oftentimes we'll get to an application point we'll talk about being in God's Word and reading His Word and having passion for it. And like this week, we use the terms desiring it more than money, finding it sweeter than honey. And so the whole reason why we talk about that so much is because it's God's testimony to us so that we can know who He is. And when we're in God's Word and we're studying it faithfully and living in light of it, we're constantly learning who God is. Then in the midst of our business, lives and our busy culture 
culture when we're you know we're running all over the place we've got so many things on our schedule it's a lot easier to see God because we already know who he is as his word describes him so if I go back to that baggy illustration I literally picked up that bag at least half a dozen times and I have no memory of seeing the screws that were in there for the right TV the reason why that is in my mind I was looking for screws that were three inches long not screws that were three quarters of an inch long so in my mind I had a picture made up of this is what it is that I'm looking for so when I picked that baggie up and I literally looked right at the right screws my mind said I don't even see them and I think a lot of times that's how it is with God. If we leave our Bible on the shelf, if we aren't studying God's Word, we'll have a misconstrued idea of who God is, and then we'll be living our busy lives and going, I'm trying to find God who is this way. But we've left our Bible on the shelf and we haven't let Him reveal Himself to us or we've forgotten what His Word says. So when life comes and those moments in life where you're like, God, where are you? Maybe He's right in front of us and we've just missed Him because we haven't taken time to remember who He is. And so I just want to encourage you in that this week, church. Take the time to read God's Word, not just once or twice, but to grow in that, to soak in that, to let that be your passion every day. That way, when life gets busy and it gets a little confusing, you won't be a fool like I was, where I was literally staring at the very thing I was looking at, but my brain didn't see it. That way you won't be like that in your spiritual life. I think so many times God is right in front of us. We know He's always present. We know He's always working, but we don't see Him because we've made up a different version of Him in our mind rather than letting Scripture showcase who He really is. So with all that being said, I want to encourage you in those application points again. Desire God's Word more than money. Find it sweeter than honey and live in it so that you know who God is and you can see Him throughout the busyness of your day as you learn more and more about who He is. So looking ahead to this next Sunday, church, we've got another week of being in the genre of wisdom. And this time it's not just generic ideas of what a godly life looks like or what a wise life looks like, but it's specifically within the context of evil. So this Sunday we're going to look at Psalm chapter 37. We're going to try to get an overview of all 40 verses, but we're going to learn how to live a wise life, a successful life, a truly happy life, even in the midst of evil and evil doers. So there's so much in there. Read that ahead of time. Know who God is so that you see Him when He's right in front of you and working as He always is. And we'll look forward to seeing you back here Sunday morning at 9 a.m.